in the past, the way dog trainers have told you to teach your dog uh, kennel training is to throw something in the kennel and let the dog go in after it and then you reward them that way and then they come out and you go back in and you do it again, you put them on a leash. <laughs> The way I like to do it is that I like for the dog to figure things out on their own. If the dog does it on their own and they feel like they did it on their own, then they build a natural instinct to want to keep doing it, especially when they figured out the reward at the end. So this is how I like to do it. Instead of opening the kennel, I'll actually close the kennel. And when the kennel is closed, I'm going to tell the puppy, look, I have something that you might like right here. Where are you? Come here. So I'm going to show it to them. I'm going to let them have it outside the kennel. That's just one, right? But they want more of it. And to gain access to it, they have to figure out how to get to it because now it's in the kennel. So I'm not opening and closing the doors and letting them go in and come out a bunch of times till they feel comfortable. The dog is gonna try to figure it out on their own. And all I have to do is just be patient and just wait. So the more they learn to open the door on their own to get to the reward, the more exciting it is, the more of a game it is, the more um, comfortable they feel because there's no pressure from you whatsoever. This is literally the dog's doing. The dog feels like they did this on their own. They feel like they figured out how to open the door on their own, how to get in the kennel on their own. I'm going to close the door first because again, I want her to learn to open the door on her own. I want her to want to go in there on her own. Right? So this is teaching her to learn to go in there on her own. All on her own. And all I've done is just put the reward inside as opposed to trying to lure her in and out and in and out and in and out. So, the door isn't closed. Good. I just want to show you that this training works. So I'm just going to go over to Capri and see if she's in a kennel. Because when you train a dog with this technique, eventually the dog grows to love the kennel. And they're just going to be sitting in there just like doing whatever they're doing. They just like to go in there. This is Capri. She's a seven month old, half German Shepherd, half Malinois mix. I've had her for three months now and I've got to say it's been the best dog training experience of my life. Do you want to know why? I learned something. I learned that structure is important. Alexa, stop. The more you reward good behavior, the quicker
quicker the bad behaviors will fall to the wayside. I tell people all the time, if your dog's bad, just, the dog couldn't be that bad all the time, right? You gotta find the moment in time where your dog's being an angel, where your dog's sitting, where your dog's laying, where your dog's waiting. And at those moments, you want to reward the dog for those behaviors. Because that's gonna incentivize the dog. It's gonna tell the dog, if I do more of this, then I get a reward. Dogs may or may not love you. Dogs love reward. They love having something at the end of the tunnel. So it's very important for you to realize when training a dog, that this is the biggest advantage that you have to get your dog to be obedient, to get your dog to behave. And that advantage is very significant because once you realize that, everything changes, right? The way you handle a dog changes, the way you interact with a dog changes. The behaviors that you would like your dog to, to naturally assume won't happen naturally, but they will happen. And when they happen, you reward them. And the more you reward them, then the more natural they become. Does that make sense? Sometimes I find myself having to argue my points to people. I understand, they are unconventional. But is common sense unconventional? I would argue yes. Every single good thing that happens in her life happens from the kennel. Our feeding time happens from the kennel. When we go to the dog park, I pick her up from the kennel when we go to the park. When I take her out to potty, I pick her up from the kennel and we go out to potty. Everything in the dog's life begins at the kennel. And so the dog naturally will start to assume the kennel to be a safe space, to be a place that she should be when she wants those other things to happen. And so the dog will just naturally start going in there in anticipation of all the possibilities that in her previous experience have happened because she was in the kennel. That's how the dog sees it. And that's really the best way to kennel train your dog in a way where the dog loves the kennel and they're not in there because you're forcing them to be in there. I'm gonna open the door. Capri isn't in the immediate rush to run out of the kennel. She's waiting for me. She's waiting for my permission because she wants to know what we're going to do. So she's waiting for me to lead her. She's waiting for me to give her uh, um, the purpose. Why did I open the kennel this time? What are we doing? So she's going to sit in there patiently. She's going to wait. I can move away and she's not going to come out because I haven't given a purpose. There's a lot of value in being in the kennel. For her, it's where we feed. And so if she's hungry, she's going to run in there and she's going to sit patiently waiting in anticipation of being fed. If she needs to go potty, she's going to run to the kennel because statistically, we've left from the kennel to the door and we've gone out to potty. She's not going to wait by the door unless we're already outside. If we're already out running around playing and doing something else, then she'll run to the door. But this is how you build trust and you build a communication with your dog. It's by having them understand all of these rules and all these boundaries and having them realize the consequences of their actions. So right now I want to go run training exercises with Capri. That means I have a motive and I have a reason for her to be out of the kennel. And so at the moment where there is a purpose, the anticipation on her end will be greater because she understands statistically that at that time I've come to pick her up to train. And that time would be now, actually, so let's go train, okay? Okay.
we've been working on kennel training. We've been working on getting her comfortable going in and out of the kennel, waiting in the kennel, all of that stuff. So let's see what it's like now. So when I open the door, I close it immediately. Open it, close it. I'm not trying to slam the door into their face, right? Like some other trainers I've heard. All I'm doing is letting them know that every time I open the door, I might close it again. So then they're not immediately in a rush to run out. So this is for me to say, to give her the okay command, tell her it's okay for her to come out. So now I've got delicious treats in my hand. And I'm gonna throw the, I'm gonna throw this out just to remind her, okay. Where's the treat? Where's the treat? I threw it over there, over there. Nope, it's over there. So she's getting used to running in and out of the kennel on her own. So here's the thing. I never want the dogs to feel pressure to go into their kennel. I want them to want to go in there on their own. So as you saw in the beginning of the training, I put the treats in there and I let her go in there on her own. I let her come out on her own. I let her figure out that this door moves in both directions. Well, it doesn't, but the fact that the door will open and close essentially. And so once she understands that, then it makes her feel secure about it. She doesn't feel like she's trapped in there. She knows that even though it's locked, that there is a way for it to open. And so it gives her a sense of peace and comfort. And she'll naturally, not naturally, but you know what I mean, she'll be conditioned to walk in there and out because every good experience that's happened in her life begins here, right? So she's going in there as a way to tell me that she wants a reward, essentially. And so she's used to the reward of food, of treats that comes every time she happens to be in there. So now she's been conditioned that going in there equals something. Waiting in there equals something. If you want dogs to know their name, you have to wait until they look at you in the eye. Ella, good. Ella, good. Ella. Good. And immediately when they look at you, you give them a reward. Ella. Good. Ella. Good. Wait until they're not looking. Ella. Good. Other ways to build value and create hand feeding in the kennel while the dog's in the kennel simply feeding the feet in there so they get used to running in there in anticipation food makes them feel comfortable it makes them feel happy to run in there you're not forcing them to go in there you should make it a habit to take your dog to the kennel first and then take them out to potty take them to the kennel take them out to play take them to the kennel feed them everything begins at the kennel that will desensitize them to the kennel itself. It will also make it feel more like a home, more like a starting point. And so whenever there's nothing going on, you'll find that the dog will start to run into the kennel on their own. And they'll be happy to be in there, whether the door is open or closed. And they'll see it as a place of comfort, as a place where all good things happen. And it's very important to hand feed. By the way, when I say hand feed, I don't mean take the food and just throw it in the kennel. That's not the same thing. I don't mean take the bowl and put it in the kennel. That's not the same thing. I mean hand feed like this. Come on. 
So what I do is the opposite from what everyone else does. First off, I'll give her a treat here just so she knows what's going on. And I'll start with a little bit of engagement training, which is just marking, just so she knows when I'm marking the behavior. So I'll say yes and give her a treat. And yes is for her to come get the treat. So when I say yes, I need her to move to get the treat. When I say good, it's for me to bring the treat to her. So we do that for five minutes just to warm her up and remind her of what the markers are. Yes. She's still chewing. These are bacon treats. Normally I just use dog food, but she's already eaten, so. Yes. And she's quite lazy. Get up. <laughs> Get up. Get up, puppy. There you go. All right, so here's what I do. This is what other people do. They'll throw it in there and say, kennel. And then the dog will really just come right back out. She's been, we've been training with her, so she's not like, she's not gonna be as bad. So, so here's what I do. I close the kennel instead. Not all the way, but just close it enough. And then I put the ke I put the treat in the kennel, but close enough to the end of it so she can sniff it. Oh, she just tried to get it. So just in the kennel right there. And now she wants to go in the kennel because she wants to go get the treat. And I literally just wait and I watch her try to figure out how to get in there. And this is like part of my, my um, technique of frustrating the dog. When I say frustrating, people take that word literally, like in the sense of like you're, like the dog's having a bad experience. It's not so much that they're having a bad experience. It's just that they are gonna try really hard. So this is almost like the opposite of that. So I'm like, I want her to want to get in there. So, so basically I'm building her drive. And that way when I do finally either open it, then she just wants to run in there immediately. You know what I mean? Activating the senses. Thank you for helping me with my <laughs> description. Working through the problem, trying to sort it out. So go, get it. I don't know if she just gave up. No. I'm gonna add even more treats. Just leave them in the kennel and she's just like, oh, how do I get in there? I'm trying to figure it out. And she's gonna get frustrated. Normally I wouldn't lock this. I would just let, I would just leave it open and she'll, you know, she's already figured it out. So I just didn't want, I just thought it, that would be too quick of a demonstration. So right now, so I'm just trying to extend it a bit. No, 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 no. Yeah, you want that, don't you? There it is. And just like that, she gets in on her own. Good. This is a very important thing. Almost all dogs need this, so we're gonna do it together. So every time I leave, I extend however long I'm going to be out of the room by a few seconds up till a minute or so. And then I come back again and just move around the room. And all this is telling the dog is that this is a normal behavior. This is something that happens normally and don't freak out even though I'm leaving because I'm always gonna come back. And so you can relax. So notice she's not making sounds anymore. There, there are different sounds that dogs will make obviously when they wanna go potty. Or really they'll make a bunch of sounds, but you could also channel this. This is what I did with Juicebox, who's 12 years old now. I channeled her barking this, by the way, took a lot of effort on my part because it was really, really an annoying thing. I don't know why I decided to do it, but I'm glad I did because uh, every time she would bark, I would literally take her outside and go potty and then bring her right back in, even if she didn't go potty. Just every single time she barked, I would do that. And then eventually, if she couldn't get to the bell, because the bell's out in the, in the exit door, if she couldn't get to it, if we were in the room and she was, 
and she needed to go potty, then she would actually bark to let me know. So whenever I heard a bark, then I would know that she wanted to go potty. So that's another thing you could do with these whining. If the dog is whining and you have the time and patience, just pick them up every time they whine or put them on a leash or you know whatever. Take them outside, say go potty, just leave just for like 30 seconds and then bring them back in. If they whine again, take them out, bring them back in. If they whine again, take them out and bring them back in. And eventually the whine will just disappear for no reason. And every time you hear it, it will mean that the dog wants to go potty because they'll start associating going potty. But you have to train the go potty first. Alexa, play Sandra Lerche on Everywhere. Amazon Music is streaming. Alexa, play Sandra Lerche. Sorry, I didn't understand. Please say yes if you would like to sign up.